Hey there folks, so this is probably going to be a short one and a little bit of a weird one because I don't think I'm going to actually do any custom building today. Uh, we're really just going to talk about a, a, a topic that is a little bit near and dear to my heart and cuts a little bit close to home. Um, so without further ado, let us take a look at one of my favorite genres of Game Boy. That genre is the Nintendo DS. So. If you don't know what you're looking at, this is what we in the community call a Game Boy Macro. And you're probably sitting there thinking, and it's exactly what two of them look like. It's just a DS Lite with the top cut off. And yeah, you're right, that's exactly what it is. But the point is, um, when this concept was originally invented, as it were, um, you could buy a DS Lite for like five bucks, um, broken. You know, usually the most common fault on a DS Lite is either the screen itself or the hinge, with the hinge being significantly more common than a bad screen. Uh, but usually a bad hinge could lead to a bad screen because, you know, if the top breaks off, then the ribbon rips and rip your screen. Uh, but anyway, this is born from an era before all of the uh, IPS kits that blessed us for Game Boys. So if you wanted a Game Boy Advance that would play Game Boy Advance games like Pokemon Emerald, it was worth your time to spend $5, buy a DS Lite, move the speaker to somewhere else inside the bottom of the console, usually right in the speaker silo or even in the DS cart slot area, cut the screen off, solder up a resistor, and then Bob Jaunty. It's a nice, cheap, backlit Game Boy Advance in the same form factor we know and love. It plays Game Boy Advance games natively. And like I said, it's $5. Like, that was the whole point. It was dirt cheap. Now, unfortunately, the pricing has gone up quite a little bit, uh, as has the price for basically everything. But, you know, it plays Game Boy Advance games natively, and it was good. Like I said, $5. Exceedingly hard to beat. Uh, the cost went up quite significantly when you'd get into, like, custom faceplates, such as this one. And then it became less of a, um... Less of a, a, a console of convenience and more a, uh, a status item, as it were. They're still super cool consoles, and you know they're exceedingly tiny. They already have all of the features you might want in a Game Boy, which is chargeable battery. Um, granted, it's a little bit of a pri proprietary port, but if you were into this sort of thing, a DS Lite charger really wasn't that big of a deal, and you probably already had one anyway. Um, Five dollars, guys. Five dollars. Um, and there were quite a bit of, uh, here we go. That is definitely a totally legit Pokemon Soul Silver. There were quite a bit of, uh, oh, this thing doesn't even have battery in it. It's not going to work, is it? Let's do this one. Quite a bit of emulators that you could run on, uh, one of the slot one carts because unfortunately these things just don't take Game Boy Color games. Uh, the cart slot is locked out and the lockout is there because these things aren't compatible with these games. Now, you can make an argument that physically the hardware exists in here to run those games. Yes, but what doesn't exist is all of the mechanical switching, uh, excuse me, electrical switching required to properly interface with a cart like this. The Game Boy Micro is the same way. Yes, the hardware does exist on the silicon die that is the CPU, but that's it. There's, there's nothing else connected to it. There's none of, none of the rest of the hardware is there. Nintendo figured, eh, it's an added expense for something very few people are likely to use. They didn't think it was gonna be a problem. And quite frankly, I agree with them, especially because the Nintendo DS and DS Lite is more than powerful enough to uh, emulate the older games. Um, I don't have emulators on this flash card. I, I, chose, a, uh, I chose a bad example. Uh, but it's a pretty good deal. Like I said, I mean, I, I'm gonna keep saying it because that's the whole point, it was $5. And I leaned into that by 
just taking broken DS lights and making them into macros. Of course, I have updated both of these and maybe this one I ha I've forgotten and I don't feel like getting a battery to find out. Um, but you know, it, it, it's a super cool mod. Uh, ever since the Giga Leak, as it were, uh, came out, a uh, entirely unaffiliated group, uh, unaffiliated from Nintendo, came out and said, oh hey, we totally just discovered this feature that is buried in the CPU that um, we totally didn't dig out of the leak. And uh, now we've got extra features, so we can take a DS Lite that has the top screen swapped off, and you notice this one has three extra buttons on it. Well, we can boot up. Of course, this one is a bad example for uh, this specific demo because I have two buttons missing, but at the time I just didn't have a membrane that had all four sides, so I just didn't do it. But anyway, we can put in a regular DS game. Oh, but Mako, you can't play Pokemon Pearl on just one screen. But that's where you're wrong, bud. Once you get into the game, that's where my three buttons come into handy, right? Huh? We can just swap screens. Oh, but it gets better because we also have picture in picture. <laughs> now, of course, this one doesn't have a touch screen, so I can't really do this. I, I gotta find a uh, replacement lower screen for this thing because I took the touch digitizer off and it has irreversibly damaged the panel. There are some pretty significant scratches on it. And I regret it, but at the time I needed to do it for the for the housing I was testing out. And this one in particular has quite a few mods because I salvaged it for parts and then later rebuilt it because I wanted my original DS consoles to be original. And um, this thing I didn't really give a hoot about because it was shits and giggles, you know? Let's play around with it, see what we can do. And anyway, I think I'm rambling a little bit too much. I'm almost seven minutes in and I haven't even gotten to the meat of the video, the meat of the subject I want to talk about. So why are we here? We're here to look at this one. Yes, the one that doesn't have a battery in it. I did a series of videos on this thing a uh, long while back. Um, I was still kind of getting my feet wet, learning how I want to do YouTube videos. I didn't even have a good lighting set up. I will link it down in the description if you want to check it out, uh, but be warned, if you think my content is hard to watch now, it wasn't better. It's gotten better, but it, it, it it's, it's bad. Anyway, this is an older design of Boxy Pixels, a Game Boy Macro faceplate. <laughs> I had some complaints at the time, uh, but overall, it's actually a really nice design. Um, one of, actually, let me summarize what I remember as my biggest complaints. One, you gotta cut the uh, LCD connector off of this thing to put the speaker there. That's just how the faceplate was designed because at the time this came out, there was no use for that upper LCD connector. Now, however, it means I cannot install my extra buttons for picture in picture and screen swapping which makes this thing kind of kind of clunky it makes it almost entirely useless for slot one games but i guess it wasn't really designed for that so it's not too big of a deal i don't like it another thing i didn't like the fact that there was no light pipe it was just a hole and your choices were fill it with hot glue which is what i opted to do or leave it an empty hole. Um, filling it with hot glue turned out to be the uh, the optimal choice because hot glue works as a wonderful diffuser and even though it doesn't have a battery the charge light should come on briefly and you can see it does look pretty decent and um, it, it worked out all right. Um, but now one of my bigger complaints was that the screen bezel was just the wrong size. Like, if we look at, sorry, I'm turning my head. If we look at one of these things and you compare the size of this screen bezel to the cutout in this thing, I had to have a custom bezel made because this was designed for glass that was originally cut to the wrong size. So because this was designed to fit that glass because it was the only glass available, they continued having the glass cut in the wrong size. So if you buy one today, it's still going to be the wrong size, and there's nothing you can do about that. I made these custom bezels. Um, this is, you can 
see it in the uh, video series I linked below. There's more information on that. Uh, I, in hindsight, it wasn't the best solution, but it did actually turn out pretty well. Um, I'm surprised how, how well it worked, in fact. But either way, not the point. I think it was a downside. I think it could have been much better. I think he should have just stuck with the stock size bezel. It would have worked out for everyone because if you use the glass, you also have to ditch the digitizer. And I see no point in ditching the digitizer because it serves as a wonderful screen protector, but also if you use it with slot one games, you can actually still make use of that. Which leads me to my biggest complaint. It's only two buttons. The DS Lite has four buttons. This faceplate covers X and Y. I think that's a real wasted opportunity. But with that being said, let's discuss the whole point of this video. I just found and bought this thing. Oh, but Mako, why would you buy another boxy pixel macro faceplate when you already have one? Well, my friends, this isn't boxy pixels. This is a clone that I found on found on AliExpress. Now, you look at this, there are extremely striking similarities, but there are also a few little differences. For starters, all of the arbitrary design decisions that Boxy put into this thing, which is this weird cutout shape uh, with a wedge on top and then a wedge on bottom, they opted to do without. They kept the wedge on top, but there's also this little pattern around the shoulder buttons and then these wedges in the side. Personally, I think the styling on this one's a little bit better, but everything else about this is 100% identical, with one exception. They solved the light pipe problem by giving you a light pipe. So there's that, I guess. Um, I don't, I don't like this. I don't like what I see. I, I have my opinions on Boxy Pixel. I think he can do better. I like the idea of his products, but I think the execution in a lot of cases is lacking. And well, quite frankly, it inspired me to do it myself. Um, so far, I've only really made the slate, which you can check out other videos if you want to see. I want to go ahead and pull this apart so we can get a better look at the inside. So I can show you what I mean when I say this thing is almost a one-to-one -one copy. I don't know if his file got leaked or if someone somewhere decided to just order one of these face plates and sit there with a pair of calipers and clone it. Uh, but it's, it's not great. Um, I reviewed my footage when I originally filmed this thing, and I saw that even some of the arbitrary decisions that Boxy made when he designed this housing, or this faceplate, they even copied on here. Stuff that Boxy did because that's just how he did it. Um they re-implemented here without any thought to maybe why he did it or without any care to the fact that they were just copying. So let me go ahead and pull this out. I'll take a look here. Is it just the one? Yeah. This out. The DS is of no consequence. You see my bezel comes with the screen because that's what it's attached to. Leave that right there. My poor cut in half membrane. Pull out my custom buttons here, set those aside. And now let's look at these. Aside from the cutout for the speaker pattern, or the uh, the holes for the speaker pattern, and the fact that mine, the original has hot glue and the replacement has an actual light pipe, you tell me what the differences are, because I only spotted a couple. The relief cuts in the start and select are a little bit different, and then the relief cuts around the screen are a little bit different. But that's a machining thing. Like, that's not necessarily part of the design. That's something that maybe they would have done at the time of machining. Uh, but, like, everything else is the same. Like, they even have, they even have the uh, hidden X and Y buttons, even though they're blocked off. Like, there's no need to do that if you don't have X and Y buttons. You could have just cut that off and left it, or even let, left those full. If you'd left those full, it would work the same, 
and it would have resulted in less time on the machine to do this. But no, they went ahead and did it anyway. So yeah, these are a thing that's out there. I highly recommend you do not support the clone makers. If you want one of these, these things, if you think it's the bee's knees uh, and you really want to try one, I mean, go grab one from Boxy. He still sells them. And for what they are, they're perfectly fine. I, again, I think he could do it a little bit better, but that's my personal opinion. Um, can you even put it together with the same parts, same order? And I'm betting my custom bezel will fit perfectly fine because I bet designed for the exact same cutout. And indeed, look at that, it is. Uh, it's not seating quite right. I don't think the screen's in there, but the cutout's the same size. And now my clone says boxy pixel. So yeah, this ain't great. I am exceedingly unhappy with this. Um, the actual quality of the faceplate, like, it's, it's negligible between boxy pixels. So there's no, like from an end user perspective, there's no upside or downside with going with one or over the other. It's just depending on which styling do you like better and do you actually want to support an original creator or do you want to support a cloner? And I'm gonna say without a doubt every time, do not support the cloner, support the original creator because this is just ridiculous. Um, Boxy, I don't, I don't know what your options are for this. I don't know if you even have any. Uh, I will say, if this happened to me, I certainly don't know what my options would be, but I would hope that the community would stand behind me and support me over the clones. And uh, that's kind of the point of this video. I'm, I'm telling you guys that they're out there. Don't support them, please. I don't care your opinion on Boxy. Um, I don't care your opinion on his products. Don't support clones. They're not good for they're not good for the community. That's all I got. That was a long-winded way of saying um don't buy garbage, but here we are. That's me. I wanted to talk about macros cuz they're cool. But there you have it. That's what they look like. It works identically to the original. If you have one of the originals and you had problems with it for one reason or another, you're going to have the exact same problems with this one. It is what it is. But look, I mean, even the cutouts are the same for the buttons. Come on. This isn't that hard a thing to make. And the fact that they just straight copied it, reprehensible. The single, single, I mean single only pro is that it comes with a light pipe. That's it. Buy originals, guys. Don't buy clones. If you want to buy one of these, I'll shoot a link to, um, I'll shoot a link to BoxyPixel store in the description. Uh, if you want to buy a clone, uh, go fuck yourself. <laughs>